Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and it's time for another reef vlog. Last weekend was reef stock, and that was awesome. It was so much fun meeting all of you. Thank you to everybody who came up and said hello. It's so much fun meeting like-minded reefers out there. It was also so much fun to go to reef stock and see the vendors, buy a bunch of coral, see stuff I've never seen before, meet lots of people. That was awesome. So I highly recommend any of these events to anybody who wants to go to them. Now, when I got home from reef stock, we had to put the corals in the tanks and get them acclimated because we bought quite a bit. And we started doing that and then I looked at the five gallon tank and it was a little cloudy and my A can was dead. It had just melted no idea what happened to it. The bird's nest was completely bleached out. So we decided we're just gonna pull everything out of that tank and put it in the 24 gallon nano. I'd already been thinking about that. You'll actually end up seeing that probably in a future episode of Reef Talk. But we pulled everything out, we took the rocks out, we took the fish out, and we put everything in the 24 gallon except for the rocks. The rocks went downstairs to the frag tank and it went pretty good. Everything seems like it's doing pretty well, except for the fish. The leopard wrasse in the 24 gallon just hated the new clownfish. It chased them around. I had hoped that once the lights go out, that it would be a calming environment, things would be a bit more peaceful. Well, it turns out it wasn't. One of my little clownfish jumped out. I was so sad when I found him in the morning. It's really sad, but what are you gonna do? I couldn't leave him in that other tank. I had to try something. So I took the remaining clownfish out and put him in that tank. And believe it or not, he's actually doing pretty good. He gets close to the four clownfish that are already in there, but you know, they haven't developed that bond yet. Now, the four clownfish that are in there sleep together, they live together, but there's a couple of them that kind of leave for part of the day and come back. It's a little weird what they do, but it's interesting. So that was a whole mess that we're still trying to get through. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the five-gallon tank. Right now, it's sitting there running with just sand and water in it. Nothing, nothing really interesting, but i got to figure out what I'm going to do for a reboot on that tank. Now, as far as reef stock, we got quite a few corals. So I went looking for some more specific stuff. I really wanted zoanthids, I wanted a bactinia, and I wanted an interesting euphelia, either a gold hammer that was branching or something cool. And I think I got pretty much what I wanted. So I wanted a pectinia for quite a while. And they had one that looked really cool at Reefstock. stock. It was under really blue lights, which it's always hard to buy coral when they're under really blue light because you don't really know what it's gonna look like in our tank because nobody runs their tank on just blue lights. Well, probably somebody does, but very few people do, which makes it hard to buy the coral. So I bought the pectinia that I liked to pass. There are a whole bunch in the tank. There were some greens and purples. And then there was this one that was kind of like a rusty color. I thought it looked really cool. So I bought that one. And it actually looks pretty cool, but yeah, it's more brown. Eh, what are you gonna do? But it's still pretty cool. It's my first Bactinia. So far, it's doing well. It was really hard to find a place in my tank to put this coral, but it ended up working out pretty well. I also bought a big zoanthid rock. This is got to be either mariaculture or something harvested right from the ocean. I'm betting it's mariaculture. But it's a big rock with two or three different colors on there and lots of color. It's beautiful and it's good size. It's probably about four or five inches across, something like that. And it's nice. It's really nice. And it was cheap. It was like 45 bucks. So I get this huge rock of zoanthid. that's lots of color. But I'm always afraid to put something like this in my tank. The reason being is you just don't know what's on that live rock. I mean, worst case scenario would be like marine velvet, right? That's always a possibility. And then hitchhikers. When you have that kind of situation, you have 
live rock and sponge and all kinds of stuff in there. You've got a lot of opportunity for there to be living organisms. Plus, it came from the ocean where there are so many living organisms. So I gave it a really good dip. It looks like it's doing really well. I haven't seen any pests yet. And it was a bit of a gamble, but I was just enamored by this coral. I walked all around reef stock and I came back. I had to buy it. I felt lucky that it was still there. So that was good. And then I bought an interesting hammer. This hammer is different than a lot of them I've seen. It's kind of like a yellowish green for the polyps, but the or the top of the polyps, but the stalk of the polyp leading up is more that kind of burgundy color like you see on my gold hammer. And I think it looks fantastic. I really like this coral, and it's a branching one, so hopefully it'll grow fast. I have, I think I like the spot for it, so I'm really interested to see how this one does. And then for the 24 gallon tank, we bought quite a few zoanthids. So we ended up taking the rock out of there that had the big toadstool on there and the yellow polyps. They, you know, they just weren't getting happy and it was a big piece in a small tank. So that's downstairs in the frag tank. So we created a nice zoa garden. So hopefully that's gonna fill in. It's just lots of different zoas that we've bought. So we're gonna fill it in, gives us room to buy more zoas. I really see what you guys mean when you're addicted to zoas. The colors on these things can be absolutely amazing. The downside is just a 20K metal halide just does not bring the colors out that these things are capable of. So, eh, bit of a downside, but I really like that metal halide. The growth out of it, it it's just incredible what it does. I love it. So, it's pretty neat. And then we also got a little rock anemone and a couple tiny monies. It was kind of funny because I set myself about a $200 budget. And I thought we were doing pretty good. I'd spent my $200. I was done buying stuff. And then my wife said, can I buy this rock anemone? And it's like, sure, why not? So we're at $225, fine. And then a little, we get home and I start pulling coral out and there's all these extra zoanthids and there's all these couple poras and stuff. It's like, well, where'd all this come from? And she's like, well, I might have bought a bunch of extra stuff. I probably have the best wife in the world, right? Who goes out and buys a whole bunch of extra coral at reef stock to put in her tank. Granted, I have to do all the work on it, but at least she's into it and puts stuff in the tank and surprises me by buying extra coral. That is awesome. So reef stock was a blast and at reef stock, I met with Aquamedic. Those guys were really cool. And right before reef stock, my PP15, which used to live in that corner, died. It's a Gbo pump. I've had it for about six months, and it died. And I was talking to the guys at Aquamedic about it, and they volunteered a couple of Eco Drift pumps for me to test. So I've got one there, I've got one in back, and so far I'm really impressed by these pumps. So I'm going to do a full review on those pumps, and we'll see how they go. I'm pretty impressed by them so far. They're small, they're powerful, they're adjustable. They're pretty cool so far. So I'm really interested to see kind of how they do over the next few weeks. I hate doing a review on something as soon as I get it. I kind of want to learn it, live with it, see what it's like, and then do a review on something. So that was a really cool thing. So reef stock was a blast. Getting caught up on the tanks. They're looking better. All the corals in. Everything is doing really well. Good, except for that five gallon. So in the comments below, guys, what should I do with that five gallon? There's gotta be something cool I can do with it. So I'd love to know what you think of that, and I'll see you on the next episode of Mile High Reefers. Thanks for watching. You really gotta work on your outro. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.